now boarding rows 30 to 40. Rows 30 to 40 through both doors 888. Now that we're getting close, we're like at, what are we, 38 days until we leave. I wanted to make a quick, fairly short video about my top 10 tips for packing for our trip to Acomal, Mexico. And this is by far not a comprehensive um, video. I do have one that's more comprehensive that you might want to check out, but um, this one will hit the main things that you don't want to forget. All right, tip number one, and yeah, I'm reading from my list so that I don't forget anything. Rules and restrictions. When you're packing for an international trip, um, one of the most important things to remember is that there are weight limits and there are restrictions on what you can bring in things like carry-on bags. Um, the weight for our trip, the weight limit is 45 pounds per checked bag. Um, there are different restrictions based on the airline that you're flying for your carry-ons. Those of us that have purchased a bundle, um, we have included in our uh, luggage allowances is one checked bag, one carry-on bag, and then one personal bag. And in my case, I'm bringing a small backpack as my personal bag. You can bring a purse, um, a backpack that's small, and whatever will fit underneath the seat in front of you. That's going to be your personal bag. Your carry-on can be bigger than that, but it must fit into the overhead bin and you don't want it to be too heavy. It's going to depend on the airline what the weight restriction is on that. We have this scale, it's a digital scale, uh, to weigh our luggage. It's portable, it'll travel with us down there and that way we can weigh our, lu our luggage um, before we leave the resort so that we're not hit with any surprises at the airport of overweight luggage. Um, they're not expensive and, and the resort actually does have one. It's first come first serve on the day that you leave to use it. Um, you might want to consider using it the night before, but it's available at the, um, the bellhop stand, the people that handle care, you're bringing your luggage up and down. Um, you also will be able to do laundry when you're there. There's two ways you can do that. Well, three really. You can hand wash it in your sink and then leave it to dry in your room or on your balcony. Just They don't really want you hanging things off your balcony. I've seen people do it. It's kind of tacky. Uh, but you can put things on the chairs on your balcony and they'll dry pretty quickly. And there is a laundry line usually in the shower um, lightweight things will dry pretty quickly on that. Anything heavier weight will take a long time because of the humidity in the room. Uh, the second way to do it is the washer and dryer that the resort has. It's down behind building two and it's available for guests to use. That's its purpose. It does cost, um, but you can get change for the, for the washer and dryer from the front desk if you don't have change. I believe it takes pesos, not positive on that, but you can get those at the front desk. Um, and they also have laundry soap and dryer sheets for sale that um, you can purchase or you can bring your own. We bring a few little Tide packets, Tide pods, and a few dryer sheets. The dryer sheets have a double duty. Um, just leaving them in your luggage will help your luggage from getting that musty smell. And then you can also use it for when you wash your clothes when you're down there. Your third option is in town. There is a laundry, uh, a laundromat 
Um, it's not where you go and do your own. You bring your laundry there. They wash it, dry it, fold it, pack it up, and then you just come back and pick it up at the scheduled time. They do a really good job from what I hear. I've never personally used them because we always just do our own laundry. But I have heard people really like it. That's available in the Pueblo across the highway. Uh, other rules and restrictions about luggage. Picola. What are you doing? You're going to knock my camera over. Don't knock my camera over. Well, Picola is going to join us for this portion of the video, apparently. Um, hopefully she doesn't lay on everything I'm trying to pick up and show you. Uh, as far as any other rules and restrictions, if you have not already paid for your luggage, you'll do that at the airport. If you have not already paid for a carry-on bag, um, and in some cases a personal bag, not all cases, but in some cases a personal bag, you can do that when you get to the airport. Those of us that have purchased the bundles have that all taken care of already. get Ziploc brand and the heavier duty freezer bags are better. You can also use uh, vacuum bags. You can use any kind of plastic bag that closes tight. Um, there's a few reasons for it. First and foremost is to keep your clothes dry. Um, you're going into the rainforest. You're also potentially going to be having a connection and there may be a rainstorm while your baggage is being moved from one aircraft to the other. This will keep your clothing dry. We've had times where our suitcases were sopping wet by the time we got them to the resort and everything inside was nice and dry. Second important use for the Ziploc bags is in your checked bag. If one of your liquids explodes, leaks, whatever, if you have everything in Ziploc bags, it won't get on your clothes. And that includes having your liquids in a Ziploc bag. And when I am packing my liquid bottles, I take the cap off, take a little piece of plastic wrap, put it over the opening, and then screw the cap back down on tight. That actually helps prevent leaks amazing, amazingly well. The third really important use for Ziploc bags is organization. I, especially after about five days, my suitcase can tend to look pretty chaotic if I'm not keeping things divided. And then I'm throwing things and looking for what I want to find and it's, it's a disaster. So I have gotten into the habit of separating things by what they are. I separate things like in this particular one, it's pajamas and camisoles. And I have it labeled what it is. And when I put it in the suitcase, I will put it in in such a way that I can see the label just at a glance so I don't have to dig for anything. Uh, it also helps to condense things down. You can squeeze a lot of the air out and it'll condense the, the volume. But be very careful when you do that because you still are subject to the weight limit. So even though it may be tempting, once you've gotten things kind of collapsed down, especially if you use those space bags that you suck all the air out of, it can be tempting to say, oh, look at all the space I've got. I can put more stuff in. Be very careful not to go over your weight limit. I try to stay anywhere from five to 10 pounds under the weight limit just to compensate for any discrepancies in their scale or in my scale or both. And I also want to leave some room for whatever I might purchase when I'm down there. Tip number three has to do with first aid and medicines. Um, I always bring a pretty comprehensive first aid kit. It includes everything from band-aids and uh, triple antibiotic ointment. Uh, I also include a suture kit, 
and I hope I never have to use it, but if I have to, I've got it. Um, compresses, um, pain medicines, just everything. I also included their medicines for uh, stomach issues, um, upper respiratory problems, uh, ear aches, um, being able to rinse out eyes and, and eye drops that will deal with, and for instance, if you spent too much time in the salt water and your eyes are really irritated, um, you're going to want to bring eye drops for that. Um, and I don't bring everything in full size. I measure, um, I, I weigh it against how likely I think I am going to be to use this, um, and I'll bring the amount that I think is appropriate for that. Yes, you can get all of these things there. It is not a third world country. And yes, they have Walmarts and they have Sam's Club. I don't know if they have Costco, but I don't shop at Costco, so it doesn't matter to me. And they also have a lot of this in the store on the resort and the small store in town. So you've got plenty of options of where to get things. I highly recommend avoiding the pharmacy in town that pharmacy is extremely expensive. So if you don't have to visit that pharmacy, all the better. Uh, as far as prescription medications, if you take a prescription medication and you're going to need to have it with you, keep it in the original prescription bottle and get your doctor to write you a copy of the prescription. I don't know that it's ever come up for us that we've had to actually, no, it's never come up for us where we've had to show uh, proof that that is our prescription, but if it ever should be a question, especially if it's a narcotic, you're going to want to have a copy of this that prescription. Uh, as far as, again, weight, th those kinds of things can add a lot of weight, so be careful about how much you bring. I like to keep mine divided. I've got a little hanging divider. It's actually supposed to be for toiletries, but I use it as my first aid and medicine kit. Um, and so it, it keeps it separated, keeps it organized, and I can see at a glance where everything is. Tip number four. If you're bringing, and you should, sunscreens or tanning lotions or both, they should all be reef safe. Um, they it may all be also be referred to as reef friendly. Um, I've got a couple different kinds. Um, this one is the Alba Botanica, and then this one is stream to see sunscreens. These are both sunscreens. There are, I can't even tell you how many brands of reef safe sunscreens there are. But the reason why it's important to get the kind that is reef safe is because Akamal is a giant sea turtle preserve. It's also a coral restoration program that's ongoing in the bay. And having anything that is not reef friendly is going to come off into the water and that's a toxin that can kill the um, the beneficial algae. it can kill the coral and it can actually cause illness for the turtles and the other sea life so you're going to want to definitely invest it doesn't cost much i think this one cost eight dollars and i think that one was maybe six or seven for what it will do to protect the reef, it's well worth it. You can get it down there if you can't find it here. I ordered mine on Amazon, so it's easy to find. But if you're not able to get it in time, you can buy it down there. Uh, and that goes for suntan lotion as well. Um, and then you've got your bug sprays. Bug sprays don't need to be reef safe because you're not going to be using them when you're on the beach. Unless you're planning to go into the water or down really um, down on, on the beach, um, let's say you're planning to attend a baby hatchling release, you're not going to want to wear bug spray for that. Um, unless you can find, and I don't know, maybe they exist, a reef safe bug spray. I haven't really looked into it. But if I'm going to be doing something like that, I'm not putting bug spray on, partly because I won't need it because you know the ocean breeze keeps the mosquitoes away. And I am not going to be down there for that long. So I have it in my bag with me so that when I come up off the beach, I can put it on. But basically, the only times you're really going to use this is if you do an in-jungle kind of experience um, and at night. I like Sawyer's. I've got it in two different forms. I've got the spray and I've got the lotion. Um, they, they don't have a bad smell. In fact, once it's been on you for a minute, it, the smell is gone. 
And so you're not going to smell like a walking pesticide. Uh, but it's very effective. I apply it once. Maybe I might if I'm, if I'm out for a long time in the evening, and especially if I'm going to be back on the jungle side for any length of time, I might put it on a second time. But for the most part, one time does me for the evening. Tip number five, what to pack in your carry-on. Now, a carry-on is not considered your personal bag. The carry-on actually is big enough that it can go in the overhead bin and should. Typically what I pack in my carry-on are things I am not going to need during the flights, but I want to have with me when we get there, especially if my luggage gets lost or misdirected. So I will always have a spare sweatshirt of some kind. Um, I pack a full change of clothing um, for the beach, um, and, you know, for when we get there. So that you know, I have shorts, I have a t-shirt, I've got underwear, I've got a swimsuit, a sarong, and flip-flops. I have everything I need if I get there and I just, I don't have anything else to wear. I will also pack one full change of comfortable clothes for in the airport if we ever get stranded in an airport for whatever reason, especially since we tend to travel during hurricane season. Hasn't happened yet, but it always could happen. And so I always pack an extra change of comfortable clothes that if I have to sleep on the floor in an airport, I've got that and I'm warm. Um, I also bring a rain poncho. You can get the smaller ones. Um, those are good you know, for just small, lightweight, something to just tuck into your luggage if you're not interested in having a poncho. I bring a better, a better poncho because we have been down there during a hurricane and if you're out for whatever reason you have to be out in that rain for any length of time you're going to want to have a poncho. But it doesn't need to be expensive so you know I get a little bit better one but these will do just fine. I also bring my valuables in my carry-on. I do not pack valuables in my check bag just for the very reason that it could get lost. I don't have my eyes on it all the time. So jewelry always goes with me in my carry-on. Um, and then because we're going to be going snorkeling a lot when we're down there, I bring my own snorkel gear and that includes an inflatable vest. Uh, that's nice and lightweight and it packs tucks nicely into my carry-on. Uh, I also put a little bit of first aid stuff in here. Nothing that shouldn't go into um, my carry-on. Remembering the, the liquid restrictions that the airlines have. But then I also have a pair of sandals and a pair of flip-flops. I wear my tennis shoes down there so I don't need to worry about having closed toed shoes. Um, for instance, if we are stuck in the airport, you now I have those closed toed shoes. I'm not, now a lot of people I'll see that are traveling to Mexico will be in their beach clothes in the airport. Well, that's all well and good unless they don't have something to change into if they get stuck. So your carry on is kind of your, it is your backup suitcase uh, just in case your luggage gets lost. And again, you're going to be lifting it, so don't pack it too heavy. Tip number six, make sure everything that you're bringing with you still fits you and that you will want to wear it. I've taken clothes down there and I've, I've tried them on recently enough that I thought I knew how it fit. And then I got it down there and, well, for instance, I'll just own it. I had a dress. I put it on when we were getting ready to go to dinner and it looked like I was packing sausage into a sausage skin. So that was not pretty. And I did not end up wearing it, but I left behind another dress that I would have worn. It. I didn't like it as much as the other one, but then I would have had that one to wear. And so I it ended up taking up space for no good reason. So make sure it still fits before you put it in your suitcase. And do you still like it? I have gotten things that I've taken down there that, you know, oh, I'm, I'm gonna need this number of t-shirts. Let's just say t-shirts. And then 
the whole time we were there, I never put that t-shirt on. I never even considered wearing it because I really didn't like it. I mean, I liked it okay, but not as much as I liked the other stuff. So if you really aren't going to wear it, don't pack it. And we also ran into um, where my son is going with us. He thought that his swimsuits, he had two of them. And he thought for sure, yeah, they fit. They still fit. No, I haven't changed that much. Well, apparently he changed quite a bit because they don't fit him anymore. Now these were from when he was 18 and now he's 25. And so, yeah, big, big difference. So we did need to invest in swimsuits for him in a hurry. Tip number seven. Clothing for the gourmet restaurant. Now the resort has one, two, three, four a la cartes. And they have the steakhouse, which is kind of like a Rodizio grill. It's you know, where they have the past, the past skewers. Um, you can order other things there. You don't have to do that, but that's kind of what its intent is. Then there is the Peruvian Asian fusion and the Mexican. And then they have the gourmet. The gourmet is the only one that has a very strict dress code. The others have a preferred dress code, but the gourmet has a strict dress code. Men need to wear a collared shirt, long pants, and closed toed shoes. For women, no, it's not that important. Uh, women can wear sandals, you know, whatever. But for men, there is a dress code. Now, as far as the collared shirt, I think they're really just kind of leaning more towards no t-shirts, no tank tops. So if you have a nice shirt, but it doesn't have a collar, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, for the long pants, it's just any kind of long pants. If you're going to wear jeans, understand you're probably going to be sweating. And if you're okay with that, you know, that's on you. Uh, canvasy, light linen materials are probably better. Uh, something that's breathable because even though the gourmet restaurant itself gets pretty chilly, the air conditioning works really well. Um, you're not always going to be in the restaurant. You're going to have a period of time where you may be waiting for your table to be ready. So think about that. Uh, as far as closed toed shoes, it can be any kind. It can even be sports shoes. It just has to have no open toe. So no sandals, no flip flops. Number eight, how much clothing to bring? That's very, that's a very specific question. And the best answer I can give you is count the number of days you're going to be there and bring at least one outfit per day, one full change. It is very humid down there. You may get rained on and you, you might spill on yourself. Who knows? I have been certainly known to do that more than a few times. Um, but bring in left so that you have a change of clothes for every day that you're going to be down there or for every day between clothing washings. If you're planning to wash your clothes uh, every four days, every one, once every week that you're there, whatever, um, bring enough clothes to kind of fill that gap. I bring a lot more than that. I bring enough for well, I probably for the whole 14 days. I'm not in shorts and that. I'm, I probably bring five pairs of shorts, maybe six. And um, But for as far as tops are concerned, I bring a lot of those. I bring a lot of outfits to wear for dinner at night because I like to dress for dinner. And I don't always want to wear the same thing. But you can. <laughs> There's no judgment. That is my preference. I have always been that way. And... For me, that is part of the fun of this vacation, is being able to dress up, being able to have a lot of different things to wear that I don't typically wear at home. Uh, and there is no judgment. If you want to just be in, you know, a t-shirt and shorts the entire time, great. And a lot of people do that. And there are people that go down to Mexico with nothing more than a backpack and they do just fine and you could too. But if you're looking to kind of get an idea of what I pack, there's your answer. Um, I pack a lot. 
I typically overflow my own suitcase into Tim's suitcase. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's just me. Uh, Tim will always, he brings four pairs of shorts minimum. And I make sure that he's got about 10 shirts to choose from, 10 t-shirts or other kinds of like, you know, summer shirts, um, several dress shirts and at least one pair of dress pants. Um, we, we usually wear down there um, sports type shoes because it's good for walking through the airport and then we have them when we're down there if we want to do some kind of excursion like to ruins or something and we want good footwear for that. Um, but basically most people just live in t-shirts, shorts, and flip-flops and you probably will for the most part too. I mean, I do most of the day, t-shirts, shorts, and flip-flops. It's just the evenings that I tend to dress up. Um, as far as socks are concerned, you're probably not going to wear socks when you're down there except if you're planning to go to the gym or go on an excursion where you're going to wear your closed-toed shoes or in the evening uh, for men if they're going to wear closed-toed shoes. Other than that, you're really not going to use socks. Um, underwear? You can wash underwear in the sink in your room and then um, put them out on your balcony to dry. As long as it's a good, good sunny day, they'll dry pretty quickly. Just make sure that you anchor anything that you put out on the balcony to dry because uh, a breeze can come up pretty quickly, a, a, a storm can blow in, and if you're not at your room, your stuff's going to end up wherever it's going to end up. So make sure you anchor it, either um, tie it down, put something heavy on it, but anchor it so it doesn't blow off your balcony. Okay, um, tip number nine, extras. I do bring some extras that a lot of people don't bring, but uh, for instance, this is what is known as a turtle light. It is a flashlight. It looks like a normal flashlight, but it has a red light. And that's for walking on the beach at night. Um, because it's a turtle preserve, you um, don't want to ever have white lights. You don't use flash photography around turtles or hatchlings. And um, at night, it can disorient them for you to have a white light. So if you're planning to walk the beach at night, which we, we love to, um, it's kind of exciting. You never know when you're going to stumble on a turtle nest that's hatching out or, or you're going to see a mama come up on the beach. We're going to be there when it's less likely that new nests are going to be forming, but it is still very likely there will be nests hatching out. And you don't want to step on a baby turtle. So red light flashlight. You can also just use a regular flashlight with some red cellophane over it. And that works just fine too. Um, I always pack in my personal bag some um, disinfectant wipes, Clorox wipes, whatever, for things like the tray table because they don't typically, even though they're doing extra cleaning now, I still don't believe they clean every single tray table um, to sanitize it. Maybe they do. But I just don't trust it, and I know that I, I have seen people fall asleep and drool all over those tables and then just wipe them off with a tissue or whatever. I have seen people set babies, diapered babies, on those tray tables. So you're going to want to have these to kind of clean those surfaces off. Um, tissues. Uh, it, I've, I've used these, I can't even think of how many times. Even if it's just for cleaning off your sunglasses or wiping the gently wiping the lens on your camera or cleaning off your cell phone so that you can take a picture and and you want to get the condensation off because there is a lot of condensation. Um, ladies and men, but definitely for us ladies because uh, we tend to wear swimsuits that don't go down our thigh, cover our thigh. I mean, some people do. That's great. I'm just talking to those of us that don't or if you're wearing a sundress. It's very humid there, and most of us uh, will chafe on your inner thigh. It's very uncomfortable, can be painful. So I recommend bringing some powder. I bring the Baby Gold Bond powder. Um, it's medicated, um, but it works really well. It's very soft, it's in a small container. You can get the blue kind that is not medicated. Uh, but it works really well to prevent chafing. I also have a stick. I didn't bring that out, but it's um, you can get it at 
you know, any grocery store pretty much. I got mine at Walmart. It's just an anti-chafing um, stick, like a, uh, looks like a deodorant stick. And just rub it on the inside of your leg. And I keep it in my beach bag with me because there's nothing worse than having that uncomfortable chafing when you're just trying to enjoy your vacation. So yeah, prepare for chafing. Um, you're, you may want to go snorkeling while you're down there and a lot of people, they don't necessarily intend to when they go down, but once they get there, they decide they want to. Uh, they have these full face masks for rent at the resort and at most other locations around the Riviera Maya, they've got them. They also have regular snorkel masks and, and snorkels. Um, we're going to bring our own because I like to know that it fits my face properly and that it is as clean as I want it to be. I know they sanitize them, but I'm just kind of funny that way. Um, so you can either bring your own or you can rent it when you're there and, and you know, it's, it's a personal decision entirely. Snorkel gear can be expensive, especially good ones. So if you're only planning to go down one or two times ever, then it's kind of a waste to buy your own. But if you think that you're going to be making it a regular thing where you're going to be going to a place, you know, go to, you know, go to Hawaii, you go to Puerto Rico, you know, wherever. If you're going to make it a habit to go to beach resorts, you may want to invest in your own. I also got a snorkeling vest that is inflatable. It's um, the kind that will give me full inflation all the way down instead of just up around my neck. I like that idea. It makes me feel safer. Um, it's the kind that you just blow up and, or, and then deflate as needed. So I got that for me, but this was a hundred dollars. So, you know, that's an investment. The one that I have in my carry on is just your, the regular kind that just, you know, just inflates about this much of your of coverage of your body, um, works the same way. And a lot of people like them and they do have straps to kind of keep them from riding up. So, and that was just, I think $12, but you know, again, that's an entirely personal decision. You can get both of these on Amazon and it can, you can pretty much get it within a few days. So if you're going to get them, you might want to get them now. Regular snorkels and face masks. Um, you can go to a dive shop and get them fitted to you, the masks particularly. Um, but you don't need to. You can just get whatever and um, you may have a little bit of a problem of a little bit of water seepage because it doesn't fit against your face very flush. If you're a man with a beard, um, you may have some issues with um, the, like the full face mask, um, not having a good seal. Um, I don't know. I've, I've never, I don't have a beard, so I really can't speak to that. <laughs> Neither does Tim. So we don't really have any experience with that. I know that with my long hair, um, a regular snorkel mask. I, I ended up getting one that was fitted to me because the ones that I was using that weren't, um, for some reason, and maybe it's the shape of my head, but the hair just, it kept kind of breaking the seal and then water would seep in and that's just never pleasant. Uh, but I highly recommend trying snorkeling at least once while you're down there. You don't even have to go to the deep water. You can stay in the shallows, but you're going to see so much that you will never see, even just looking straight down into the water. You'll never see the things you'll see when you actually have a snorkel mask on and you put your face in that water. You'll be amazed what you are not able to see because of the the way that they camouflage themselves and the reflection of the water or whatever. You're, you're going to be amazed at what you could see. Uh, that's really kind of all the extras. You know, you can bring a travel pillow. I have, and I like bringing mine. I use it on the beach as well as an extra pillow for like behind my back or behind my neck. Um, but you know, you can live without it. Uh, the next, the next big topic, the next big tip, number 10, final one has to do with money and documents. Um, I have two options that I'm considering. This is a flatter security envelope. It snaps open and shut. It just has one pocket, so it's not really divided. And I'm not sure that I like 
having to search through things. This is probably what I'm going to end up going with. It's bigger than the one I used to use. The one I had was just six divided pockets and I really liked it. And I think that I gave it to one of my kids and I've never gotten it back. I'll have to look. But, you know, I keep the passports in here until we're at the airport leaving so that I know everybody's passport is going with us. We're not leaving home without somebody's passport. Um, so I, I'm kind of the cruise director, so to speak. You know, just think of me as Julie, the cruise director. Um, I keep track of all the documents. Uh, in here, right now it's in here, but I've got a, um, at least one copy of our itinerary that I've uh, printed off and put in here. I will have another copy in each of our check bags because that's how the airline is going to be able to connect our luggage to us if it gets lost or misdirected. It will have who we are, where we're going, what airline we took, that, and, and it also has our home address information, but I also include an identification sheet in each checked bag, which includes uh, our name, our address, um, contact phone number, and um, what resort we were going to um, so that they can reach us if they need to. They can connect our bags with us. If you don't have that in your check bag and it gets lost, it's going to the lost luggage warehouse, never to be seen or heard from again. You might get lucky and they might be able to connect it back to you because of the luggage tagging. Um, it's, uh, it's superior to what it used to be. And a lot of airlines have apps that you can download that track your luggage and send you notifications of where it is along the trip. But if that tag comes off for whatever reason, there's no way for the airline to know where it's supposed to go. So I like to have something in there that they can easily find. Um, but in here I also will keep um, some little, oh, I guess I may have them somewhere else. I have little tags that I have created. And this is why I don't like that this is not divided because if they were in here, I would know right away if it was divided. But I have little tags that um, say in Spanish, thank you for taking care of us and paper clips. And every morning we paper clip one of those to the tip for the housekeeper before she comes in. So that not only does she know that money is intended for her, but it also says in Spanish, thank you to her. Um, so, I keep those tags in this so that I can easily get to them and they don't get wet, they don't get lost in one of my other bags. Um, I don't keep the pesos in here. We have a security um, envelope that we keep the pesos in and we keep that in the safe. Every room has a safe in it and it's not a big safe. You can put a tablet in it, you're not going to put a laptop in it. So there's your comparison. So our true valuables will stay in that safe. We'll also keep our passports and immigration documents in that safe. And yes, you are immigrating even though you're just a traveler, you are immigrating into their country and you have a limited amount of time that you can stay there. I think it's 60 days. And so there are documents that they will give you at the airport. It's just a little a small piece of paper. They'll, they'll tuck it into your passport. Do not lose that paper because it'll cost you $50 per person to replace it and it's a hassle and you could miss your flight. That document is supposed to stay with your passport or stay with you, I keep it in my passport, until you leave Mexico. They will then take that document and that proves that you've left. So they don't have to worry about somebody overstaying their tourist permission.
I made a video about tips. I'm going to include in here. Um, you'll have to probably pause the video to see the breakdown of how we do our tipping. Um, the exchange rate right now in the U.S. for buying pesos is about 20 pesos to the dollar. So for every dollar in pesos, for every U.S. dollar you use to buy pesos, you will get the value of $20 U.S. Um, so um, the, you have to know the breakdown. You have to know the current exchange rate, but understand that not all locations in Mexico will use that exchange rate. There's maybe a little less and you know, it's still really a good rate, but just understand that even though you may have purchased pesos at a particular rate, you're not necessarily going to get that rate in Mexico when you use us currency. So, um, we bring enough pesos that it covers a lot of the things that we do. But if we use a credit card or US dollars, we know that the exchange rate we're getting there on that date is not as good as what we got here. It's just a trade-off. Um, as far as tipping in, in US dollars, or any other currency for that matter, it is more difficult for the, um, the employees to be able to not only go and exchange for Mexican pesos, but they also aren't going to get as good of an exchange rate as you're going to get. And so you may think you're tipping them $2 when really you're tipping, tipping them anywhere from a dollar to a dollar and a half. So if you tip them in pesos, they get the full value of your tip. So understand how the breakdown is and maybe have a little cheat sheet that you carry with you with your pesos that if you want to tip $5, you say, okay, how much is five us dollars in pesos? Um, if you, if you don't understand how the currency works, it's better to have a cheat sheet so you're not giving somebody 50 cents in a tip when you really thought you were giving them $5. Um, and then you also will have a cheat sheet so you know, and you can go on your phone, you can have an app on your phone where it'll break it down, but you'll also know if you're getting the correct change back. Uh, you can always exchange four pesos at the front desk, but they don't always have small bills. So if you know if you're exchanging in order to tip, that could be a bit of a challenge because they may not always have enough smaller bills available. That's why we typically break down what we think we're going to be needing for tips and bring that plus a little extra. You can use credit cards at most places in Mexico. Uh, you can use it all over the resort. In fact, most things on the resort you charge to your room, uh, but you can use a credit card to pay for it you'll pay for it at the end with your credit card and most of the stores in town and around the area and most of the, the larger attractions take credit cards some take only pesos and some will also take us but some only take pesos um, you just have to be prepared for that possibility that you may need to have pesos with you if you leave the resort and then decide how much you're going to want to spend in pesos and take that with you. Uh, that we've not ever had a problem with um, errant charges on our credit card. We're careful about where we use it. Uh, the, the shops that are right in Akamal, for every, everything we've ever purchased there has, we've never had a problem. I have heard that there are specific ATMs that you should not use and some that are okay to use. Um, I'll look that up and put that on here, which one is the good ATM to use that is not going to rip you off or steal your credit card information. Um, but they, they have been known to have people that have used a particular ATM have had problems with their credit card information being stolen. Well, that pretty much covers everything I can think of as far as money is concerned. That's all of my top 10 tips. And if you have any questions, Hit me up, happy to answer questions. Um, if you have any tips to add, feel free and put it in the comments below and um, I'll grab any good tips that I see. I'm always open to an easier way to do something or a better way to do something. And I certainly am always open to when something has changed and my information is now outdated and not accurate because that could certainly happen.
And for anybody that's been watching this video and is wondering where we're traveling to, it's the Acumal Bay Beach and Wellness Resort in Acumal, Mexico. If you have any questions about that resort, you can go to their Facebook page, to their website, or you can hit me up and I'd be happy to answer any questions. But yeah, it's it's a five-star resort on a 10-star beach. And I can't wait to get there. This will be our 11th or 12th visit. I can't remember. But yeah, we've been going there. It'll be our 11th visit because our first time going there was in 2010 and it's 2021. So 11 years and we just have never found a place that we like anywhere near as well as we love this place. So here we go, our home under the sun. Can't wait to get there. Everybody should be getting ready to get packing. Believe it or not, I'm almost done. I'm sure you believe it because you know me and I'm packed and ready to go a month or more ahead. So now I'm working on getting Tim packed up. <laughs> And I have Matthew halfway back and we still have over 30 days to go, but that's the way I am. And that's all I've got for you. Till I see you guys again, have a good day.